finished, uh, Danielle. And Lisa shared with me some some people who I should know who I didn't recognize, uh, who didn't get in the show. Um, so I have to say that, I, you know, I think that if you're showing your, your most recent work, I am aware of having looked at art since about 1976 for, for reasons of curating shows, that, um, you know, transitional work is really important and it's really important that you put it out there if you're sort of into a new phase or a new direction in your work. It's really important that you do put it out there for people to see and evaluate. Um, when I put together retrospectives or surveys of artist shows, I always appreciate that transitional work because I think when you're working in a new phase or even a new medium, um, that really informs the work to come and all the detours are really important in your learning more about yourself and the direction you want to take your work. So I know from organizing surveys, I always put in transitional work because that's telling the narrative over 10 years or 15 years or whatever. And when you see the transitional work with work that is totally resolved, then um, you can appreciate where it came from because it doesn't just spring from you know, this kind of finished work, watercolor, and someone transitions to oil painting, and right away they've figured it all out. So I, I got a sense from some of the work that I was not including the show that maybe it wasn't as resolved, maybe, as other work you may have at home in the studio. I don't know. But that comes to why I did choose what I did and why I chose these works as as the winners and honorable mention. And that's because, you know, I'm, I'm looking for work that does look resolved. And when I look at work, I start with what you presented to me as your offer to me to start a conversation with you about your work. And um, so I start by deconstructing it in a way, visually, to find out what your intention is. Why did you why did you choose the scale? You know, why did this person choose this size paper? Why did this person choose this subject matter? Um, why did this person choose this material, this medium to work in? And, and so that's my initial evaluation as I walked around several times looking at everything. Uh, the things that seem resolved pop out to me and I uh, they, they're very confident, too. The works are very confident. So I've said this before, that I think the work tells me it wants to be in the show, and it tells me it wants to get an award, because it, it has addressed all the, the foundations of thinking art in whatever medium that the artist has chosen. So it's three dimensions, if it's clay, or if it's um, pastel, or watercolor, or collage, even photography. It, uh, okay, this artist chose to work in this medium, and um, they chose a certain scale, and they made deci certain decisions, and all those decisions that they made to complete the work and decide it was finished end up with a work that has resolved the scale, and the composition, and the light, and, um, and, and the subject matter, and all those issues. So. It, it takes a while to, uh, you know, to go around and absorb all that, but I'm also used to imprinting things quickly, and of course, having been in Basel, I was really um, sort of prepped for that, because I, I went to six fairs and I looked at thousands of works of art. But the other thing is that, um, yeah, so the other thing that I'm interested in Besides the traditional approaches, is I'm looking for something new sometimes too in a show like this. I like to recognize someone who's taking a different approach to painting. Uh, and I think that's the case with this portrait over here. And that was something that I was, I was doing when I was in Miami at Art Basel. I, I love painting and I'm, I'm always looking at, is somebody adding something new? 
to the discussion or defining what is a painting. And um, so this, I like the brush strokes and this, particularly with the portrait, it's a completely different application of brushwork in the body and in the background, but I kind of like that. Some people might argue, well, that's not consistent, but I think it is, and I think it works, and I feel like this person has captured um, the personality of this individual um, with tiny little brush strokes. This work, I keep coming back to this over and over, and I think that this artist challenged themselves with a, a very complicated composition, if you think about it. Um, there's, there's many perspective, perspectival issues that are going on in this work. And if you think about how difficult that is you know, to convey three dimensions in two dimensions, um, the whole position of this figure, squatting, reaching out in relationship to the face on the street, um, very consistent colors. Also, working with this the size of this paper, that the figure isn't too crowded. There's enough space around it, but yeah, it's contained. But it brings, she draws you right into it, and she's not looking at you. But you can assume her posture in your mind and imagine you know, that's sort of an awkward kind of posture to hold. So. I just felt like this was a huge challenge that this artist set for themselves and, and they met it really well and so the light works, everything works in it. Um, um, Mark, I'd like to ask if the artists are here. Okay. So is Kathy here? Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm going to ask her to ask questions. Okay. Um, Kathy, you're here. I've done a series of chalk artists. This is number five. And um, many of you are familiar with the Venice Chalk Art Festival, which is a crazy situation. These artists have um, a 20 by 20 square that they work in for like three days. And they do these beautiful pieces of work. And then the rains come, as we all know, the Florida rains, and it's gone. I mean, it's just like heartbreaking to see this. And I mean, they work, they're sunburned, they're sweating. They've got bruised knees. I mean, it's just a horrendous situation. And I was very much inspired by seeing them because I do you know, work in watercolor, which is so much more permanent. Mm -hmm. So that was my motivation for, <clears throat> for doing it. And the paintings take me probably close to 100 hours to do. Thank you. I know, I mean, if you come up and look at all the detail on this, it's, it's quite remarkable. Um, with, with these kinds of exhibitions, too, I mean, I, probably, I could have picked all paintings, I could have picked all watercolors, you know. I tried to, uh, to, you know, look at the different categories and find some strengths in each one. So some other people might have been equally as competitive in watercolor or pastel or whatever, but. You know, I feel that's my responsibility as, as a juror in a group show like this to try to single, single out different different media. So this uh, clay piece I thought was very strong too. Um, again, capturing the personality of the uh, individual. Or just, it doesn't seem like this could be just a fictitious uh, person. It's, um, it looks like it, it, this person exists. Probably not at this scale, although who knows. <laughs> but um, I think that you know this artist defined a challenge and uh, it met it really well. And it's also a sculpture is so difficult because it has to work in the round. And I think this really does. And I do think it captures you know personality and its visual. And having worked at the Ringley Museum for um, ten years, if you know the collection, they had some amazing terracotta busts from the 16th century that somehow survived in terracotta. I mean, it's quite extraordinary. And they're not, they weren't broken. They were in perfect condition. So if you work in clay, you haven't ever seen these, check them out. Or if you're a sculptor, just in general, they're amazing works of art. So I am referencing in my mind, because um, I'm also trained as an art historian, 
I'm referencing in my mind when I'm looking at where every single work of art that I've ever seen in my life. Which sounds kind of crazy, but you know, I do think that we do imprint, and you all, we all imprint different things every day. And we all have some compendium of imagery, and not just imagery, but sensory experiences, smells, and tastes, and so forth, that we draw on when we see something new. And we're always doing this comparative, you know, OK, is this the best? Alfredo sauce I've ever had. You know, whatever it is, a meatball, it could be a photograph, whatever. So, so at, in my world, I'm visually comparing everything that I see that's new to everything I ever saw before. And I think I wasn't conscious of that that's what a curator has to do to be discriminating until I worked with a curator when I was in college and he taught me. He taught me to do that and how to do it and how to look um, critically at works of art. So um, I'm very grateful for that. But that's sort of the backstory of partly how I come to making the decisions I do. So there's there's a lot of great photography in the show. There certainly is. And um, but I, I gave the award to this one partly because it's it, this. Artists turn it into an object. And I think that works of art are objects, whether they're three dimensional, like sculpture or painting or work on paper. Um, that's part of what I was trying to explain earlier in that all the decisions about scale and dimension are about its object and its, you know, the presence it has in this space here on the easel, on the wall. Um, that is part of what starts the conversation with you, the viewer, is the object quality of it. Um, and so this, this photograph, I kept coming back to it, um, partly because it's, it's printed on uh, aluminum, and also the way it's cropped, and the subject matter, which is a tree, but it doesn't look exactly like a tree, and the light keeps changing because of the way it's printed on the aluminum. And so I thought it had a very interesting uh, quality. I chose to um, give a merit award to, uh, you know, honorable mention award to a digital piece that is you know, the gallery it's in. But I found that really intriguing too because I think that's, that's a medium that uh, not too many people are working in. And um, it's a new language, but I think, I hope you agree when you see it that it's very successful. It looks like some kind of, it looks like yarn, actually, that's suspended in space. And I'm not sure how it was made, and that doesn't really matter, but it's a very interesting object, and it's interesting uh, image. And then I think um, this is another work that I think is very powerful because of the scale of it, the challenge that the artist made for themselves as far as creating this very recognizable creature. We've all seen it either in person or in a film or in a cartoon even. Um, and then the way it's all made up of tiny squares where there's so much information in each square that you can see up close. Um, so there's sort of countless narratives that you can spin or weave about um, this image. So. Mark, is that artist here? Sorry, I forgot to mention on the other one. Jill. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Great. Well, congratulations. So, is the photographer here? Okay. Great. And what about the sculptor? And the clay piece? <coughs> and I think you said the person is not here who did the portrait. Right. They're in Miami. They're in Miami. Great. Okay. And what about the other um, honorable mention? Anybody? Judy Saltzman's here. Okay. Yay. Yay. Yeah, great. So um, I think I think I'll just turn it over to some questions then now. Anybody have any questions? Any questions? I um, have a a greater greater sense of realism to them, and there's a lot of abstract, more abstract in the whole show. Right. Why work? Why wasn't one represented? And one aspect where it represented.